What's up, everyone? All right, well, uh, another day trading from the house. A little bit of snow, really, I mean, yesterday, but I just, out of convenience, um, trading from home for today and, uh, and yesterday. So, green day here this morning, finishing up $1,892 in the main account, which is uh, a good day. You know, this is, uh, Kind of right now me just trying to be happy with small progress not think of it as very small gains in the shadow of the incredible week best week of the year that i had last year uh, just to focus on consistency so today i traded three stocks in my main account and i'm green on three names so that's what i'm talking about consistency finish the day uh, right around uh, 10 a.m and uh, today is um excitingly my 10th consecutive green day. So 10th green day in a row and uh, try to make it an 11th green day in a row tomorrow. All right, you guys, so that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoy the recap. As always, questions, comments, leave them down below and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. All right, everyone, so um, we're gonna do our um, first recap here today, which will be um, recapping my uh, main trading account. So up $1,892.32 trading uh, three stocks, and um, fortunately with accuracy, 100% uh, green on three out of three names. BRN is the biggest winner. It was um, kind of a trade that I botched a little bit, so uh, I'll talk about that and we'll also kind of go back to um, the open where I took my first trade, which was on IDXG. I did trade in the TD Ameritrade account today, my small account, Side Hustle Challenge, and I'm going to recap this one separately during um, uh, the TD Ameritrade um, Challenge videos. All right, so time frame, we're going to go to historical date. We're going to go to 9.25 a.m. And at 9.25 a.m., our leading gapper this morning was Sprint. So anytime Sprint is the leading gapper, you can pretty much bet that it's gonna be a slow day. Now that's typically because Sprint has a float of four billion shares and is just not a very active day trader type of stock. And in fact, today, despite being up 75%, uh, it's really holding in range. It had a low of 817 and a high of 845, and it's, it's just been range bound. So obviously no trades on that for me. The second leading gapper, CHNR, only five shares of volume. AIM, already over two million shares of volume by the time the market, uh, the bell was ringing. Typically I consider anything over a million shares of volume to be crowded pre-market to the point where uh, the bell ringing no longer has the same significance as a stock that maybe just released news, news at like 8.45 or 9 a.m. Traders haven't really reacted to it yet and then the bell rings and we start to get some opportunities. So no trades on AIM, not on the watch list. GNPX uh, was on the watch list as a maybe for a break over the pre-market high. And in fact, that would have worked. Uh, the pre-market high was 162 and it squeezed up to a high of 174, but that's only 12 cents. Now, you never capture the entire move. So even if you captured half of it, that's only six cents. It just doesn't really justify the trade in my opinion and and i kind of thought that it wouldn't give a whole lot of opportunity which is why i, I didn't jump on it right away now i did end up or, or even at all i didn't trade it at all i did jump on brn um which uh was a slight gap and out of the gates started squeezing up now it's also lower price stock and i had kind of low expectations for it but when i got in i saw that it had already squeezed up a fair amount it was looking basically just strong surging up buying volume. And so for me, that that looked um, much more appealing than GNPX. All right, so anyways, continuing on the gap scanner, REXN uh, also on the scan here up 20%. The pre-market chart on this one um, was not looking super great. It was kind of already stair-stepping down. No trades on that. ZKIN gapping up 15%. With news, um, I, I didn't think it would do much, but all of a sudden right here, it ended up curling um, and breaking through 140. 
it hit the high day momentum scanner. That would have been right around here. And I went ahead and jumped in at $1.50. It hit a high of $1.63. It then pulled back and I sold at about $1.54, $1.52, and $1.43 for a loss. So I, I actually net only $144 on that trade on ZKIN um, in this five minute candle and, and ultimately ended up feeling like, all right, I think the writing's on the wall that this is the end of the day for me. The fact that this rejected that much was kind of disappointing. So that was my last trade of the day. Uh, but my first trade of the day, uh, we'll go back here, ended up being on IDXG. So IDXG was on the gap scanner down here, gapping up 8% or almost 9%. Uh, let's see. We had a catalyst on it. It had news pre-market and uh, it's a former runner with a recent reverse split. So I kind of thought this one had potential if it started to open up and it did. It At the bell, it ripped from 840 all the way up to, to 880, 890 to 9, up to 925. So I traded this one uh, in my TD Ameritrade account, but also in my main account. And I bought, so here's the thing. Um, once again, I logged in um, on the Ross CA. Um, I pressed shift one right in this candle as it was breaking over 50, opening range breakout. And of course my order got rejected. I then switched to my IRA account by pressing the escape button and jumped in, I don't know, it was somewhere in the 80s or somewhere up here. Uh, and I only bought, I think it was 2000 shares because I just felt like, well, now I'm chasing it. But I'll see if I can get a little bit of a trade on it and rode the momentum from nine uh, up to 925. So I made $221, whatever, not a home run. That was with 2000 shares. With 300 shares, I made $146 in my TD account, a full 50 cents per share, which is great. So did well over there, but in the main account, um, not, not so great. So kind of fumbled my trade uh, on, um, on this one. And um, that was my first fumble of the day. The next trade uh, was on BRN. BRN, uh, although it may have been on the gap scan, yeah, it was down here with a 6 million share float. I didn't notice it because the price is a little cheaper. Uh, so anyways, all of a sudden, BRN hits the scanner right here, 32, 30, 35, 33, 36, 37, 38, 40. All right, so I pulled it up and this is what I saw. Stock is squeezing up. First thing I do is I check the headline. I see that there's a catalyst reporting results um, for the end of the first quarter ending December 31st. So I see there's a catalyst and I jumped in getting in a right around $1.40 for the break of $1.50. I punched that for 1,000 shares in my TD account and I also jumped in in my main account. It breaks over $1.50 and realistically on stocks of this price range, I usually say 10% is pretty good. So from $1.40, 14 cents would be $1.54. So it gets up to $1.54, $1.55 starts to move a little higher. I, I throw orders on the ask, I take my profit. And then all of a sudden in this candle right here, it pulls back for a second and then shoots up to $1.92 without me, I'd already sold. Then it opens and squeezes up to a high of $2.68. I got back in uh, on this candle as it dipped down for this surge here up to 260. So I was up 400, I added an extra $1,100 on that trade, but um, overall I was kind of disappointed that I didn't hold it a little bit longer. Having said that, um, yesterday was a very small green day. I made only $400, and that's coming off of a week last week where I made almost 50 grand. So to make only 400 is like, whoa, that's next to nothing in comparison. So it made me think that maybe this was the calm before the storm, that you know, I, I needed to really ease off the throttle. And I did yesterday, I eased off really quickly. As soon as I started to feel it slowing down, I slowed, I, I, as soon as I felt the market slowing down, I slowed down in my trading. <sighs> Excuse me, coming into the market today, um, I said to myself, you know, yesterday was a small green day. Sometimes, you know, as the days get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, you're just kind of trending to having a red day. So I said to myself, just be careful, go slow. And for that reason, on IDXG, even though I was chasing it, 
I went with small size and I took profit quickly. And that was the right move on IDXG because this thing did a topping tail at 925 and completely rejected. Terrible rejection. So it was the right move to be very conservative on that trade and take profit quickly. In fact, it was the wrong move on BRN to take profit as quickly as I did because it moved a lot higher. But at the end of the day, I can afford um, leaving money on the table much more than giving back profit. And on IDXG, if I had kept holding, I would have given back profit. And on BRN, you know, yeah, I left some money on the table, but at least I'm walking away green. This is the same approach that I've had for the TD Ameritrade account, the small account challenge through the month of, uh, well, for the last six weeks, five weeks or whatever. Uh, I take profit quickly. And sometimes, oftentimes, that does mean I leave some money on the table. But at this point, because it's an account that's right now only $4,200, I can't afford the risk of having a really big drawdown. It would just set me back too much. So I have to be content with small base hits, taking that profit. And, you know, when the account gets a little bigger, I may be able to afford to hold a few trades a little longer and, you know, do a little bit better. And if that happens, that's great. Uh, but really, I have to be very mindful about avoiding um, unnecessary losses. And that means taking profit off the table pretty much as soon as I have it. So that ended up working out really well today. And uh, it puts me up almost... 2000 in my main account, another 300 in, in the TD account. So a solid green day. Obviously, it's not a home run, but um, in between home runs, if I can hit a lot of base hits, that's, um, you know, that's a great way to keep kind of grinding and being in the market every day without getting burned out. So, uh, you know, on BRN, I, I also would say that probably trading in two accounts, the TD account and my um, main account, caused me to you know divide my focus and not trade it as effectively as I would have if I had been focusing just on one single account. But that's just kind of where I'm at right now with doing this and, and it's fine. I, I'm gonna accept that and be okay with it and um, lock up uh, another green day. So today is, um, let's see, the seventh day of the month and it's my seventh green day. Uh, seven Green, green seven out of seven days. It's actually my 10th green day in a row. The um, green streak started on January 29th. So I've been green now for 10 consecutive days. And, um, you know, it's not about setting any records or doing anything like that. It's just about being consistent and trading the market I'm in. And when I really focus on trading the market I'm in, uh, I, I seem to be doing a pretty good job avoiding unnecessary losses. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And I'll be back at it tomorrow. Uh, I plan to be down in my office tomorrow, which will be nice, and uh, you know, try to have a couple more green days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, just slow and steady. Remember, we've got President's Day coming up here, so, um, and of course, February is uh, a little bit of a shorter month, although this year's a leap year, um, but in any case, um, really, this is pretty much a regular month. I mean, we've got four full weeks of trading. We just have President's Day off, so... Uh, it's, it's fine. It'll be a, a fine month. All right. So uh, that's it for me. Again, really not looking at where I sit on the month uh, or necessarily even the week. I'm just coming in each day, focusing on t having the best day I can today. And I think I did pretty much the best I could today. You know, could have done a little bit better, but I I'm, I'm really happy with it. So green day and I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. Hey, did you know every morning I go live to stream my pre-market watch list? Subscribe to the channel, press the alert button, and you'll get the notifications. And if you want to learn more about trading, check out the links in the description. And if you have questions, post them in the comments because I personally respond to every comment posted on my channel.